PC fans, I'm Tiffany. I'm Sal. And we're from Comic Pop, a YouTube channel where we talk all about comics. But today, here we are in DC Fans, and we're doing our show off the rack. That's right, it's a comic book show where we talk about the writing and art of a single issue and tell you what we thought about it. And today, we're excited to talk about Superman American Alien number two. I'm really excited to talk about it because we read the first issue and loved it. Yes. It was such a different issue entirely from this one and I think that's the idea that Landis is trying to do with it's each issue is a different segment of Clark Kent's life yes from a different perspective this mm-hmm. is by the way written by Max Landis and drawn by Tommy Lee Edwards which is completely different from the last issue and will be completely different from the third issue right uh, this one kind of takes place over Clark's early adolescent life We're dealing with you know driver's license cars that kind of thing imminent like, graduation from high school yes and uh, and budding responsibility, you know, as a young Kryptonian being raised on Earth. Uh, <laughs> we all have that problem. Right. All right, so let's just talk about our initial thoughts of this issue itself. Uh, what'd you think? I loved it. Right? Oh, my god. That gosh. was my opinion as well. I... And- I hate to gush too much about a book. I know. It looks really phony. But, I know. Like, I, I know. really, really enjoy this no, series. No, I know exactly what you mean. And honestly, like, I went into reading this book kind of on the high of the last one. Yes. And so part of me was like, there's no way it can continue that energy and that incredibleness. And it really delivered. Yes. Like, it really did. But in a totally different tonal way. Right. The last, If the last one was Iron Giant, this is like Breakfast Club, but yeah. darker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I could see that. It felt Definitely. more like a Coen Brothers movie. It was right? really just, yeah. And not to like throw names around, but on our last episode... Of Off the Rack, where we did American Alien. Max Landis actually commented on it. That's right. And gave us a heads up about the tonal change. That's right. And that really helped. Yeah. I gotta tell you. It, it really did prepare me, because Tommy Lee Edwards is so excellent at what he does and giving us a gritty reality. Yes. And it was such a sheer departure from the last issue, where it was kind of jubilant and youthful and idealized yeah. and fun. I mean, talk about art matching the tone of a book or mm-hmm. matching, um, like, a period in a person's life. Yes. Like, wow, they're just nailing it. Yeah, and they hit so many different amazing points in pretty much, what, a two-day span in this kid's life? Yeah. We get, yeah. Uh, we get girls, we get best friends, we get uh, the small town, we mm-hmm. have parental figures. We have so much going on in a kid's life that you kind of take for granted or you imagine over a span of, let's say, four years, yeah. distilled into one or two days. Yeah. Uh, also, of course, we have the grand nature of an adventure. Of course, you can't do a Superman comic without Superman or Clark Kent triumphing over some kind of adversity. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it's a stark, gritty reality that I was not prepared for, but so on board for after I was finished reading it. <laughs> That's interesting. I, have, I guess from like the get-go, seeing the change in art and knowing... That the art was going to be changing from book book to book, like yeah. it really prepared me for what was coming in the comic. I, I mentally, I was like, okay, like this is a very different phase in Clark's life, and I appreciated all the little touches that were in the background of panels that really like gave you an insight into what Clark was going through. I mean, the fact that you have Clark Kent inevitably to be Superman, you know, hanging out with his buds, having a, a, a beer. I having, was like, yeah. this is awesome. Like. Yeah. He wasn't the, like, all-American hero. All of him. He was a kid. The funny he thing was is, having a good time. I, you know, I never really imagined Superman as a teenager, unless I'm picturing him as Superboy. Right. And to picture Clark Kent and Superman being this all-American, all-truth-justice yeah. in the American way, and being kind of a Boy Scout character, to see him as a teenager and to see him sneak in illegal beers yeah. and, and, and really looking forward to making time with Lana, right. uh, <laughs> you, you kind of really don't expect it. And I'll tell you... I think if you had told me objectively that this is what would occur in the book, I'd be immediately turned off. Right. But reading it and experiencing it, I, what's more American I, no, than it's, this kid's life? Right. And what he's doing. No, it might not be ideal or it might not be, you know, something to aspire right. for, but there it is. You're really building up. Just, I'm just so on board and... And I don't want to say I'm waiting for the shoe to drop because I'm really not. No. But, like, I'm terrified of it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm terrified of it because I'm worried that the length of the miniseries will diminish some of these monumental pieces of his life. Because how many more can there be? Right. Because we're doing such a jump between ages. That's true. And That's true. You know what? I really, honestly, my skepticism and cynicism are put aside. Yeah. Thanks to Superman because of my belief in the character and because of my, uh, it's just sheer surprise at Landis's ability to understand and demonstrate that character. Right. I'm just so on board. I, I mean, like, 
the man knows what he's doing. Yeah. Like, he really does. And it's really, for me, it was really evident on that first page. Because that first page reads like I'm reading storyboards for oh, yeah. a movie. And oh, yeah. I was like... Well, the man has his experience with that, of course. Well, of course he did, but he translates it so well. And you know what's funny? I've read different books that are, by and large, movie pitches. Mm-hmm. This is not one of those no. things. That's the thing that I'm really happy to say. It really does blend the mediums. It mm-hmm. makes you kind of think of a movie when you're reading it, but only in as much as you're almost seeing the action between the panels as it goes, because it's so fluid. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't read as simply a movie pitch that is also in storyboard form. This yeah. is a comic book. Don't get me wrong. Right. And, uh, and and a damn fine one at that. It is. And, you know, just touching really quickly on the fact that we're getting these jumps. Yes. They're doing a great job of filling the gaps in, or letting me fill the gaps in, mm-hmm. in between these jumps without having to explain every single little minutia. Yes. This is also the first issue in the series where we get a cliffhanger or a teaser for what's to come, yes. which we didn't get in the last issue. That's right. I'm not going to spoil it. I just want to say mm-hmm. I was not expecting it, and I can't wait to see the Landis treatment for it. I know. I, I, I would not believe I'd say that out loud. I know. Here we are. No, it's absolutely true. I, I cannot wait to, to see everything he has the opportunity to touch, and I, I'm just hopeful for some of the things that he might get to. Yes. I don't even want to speculate. That's no, the funny thing. I, I can't even imagine. But hey, at the end of the day, it's your money. Let us know what you thought of Superman American Alien number two in the comment section down below. Love to see that conversation going. Mm-hmm. And if you like this little back and forth here, you can always swing by Comic Pop. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. I'm Sal. And I'm Tiffany. Bye.